Personal statement will be in the pipeline for majority of you medical school applicants over the next coming weeks and personal statements generally will be used either to score your application, to provide you a spot in medical school or if not they will be used to question you and grill you in your interviews. A good personal statement will generally sum up your background, the reasons why you want to study medicine and give you a highlight and sort of reflection on your experience. With this, one of the more important things about the personal statement is the experiences that you've done yourself, obviously, because these will be the sort of the crux of the document itself and they'll give the admissions team the general sort of gist of what you've done and how much you've done towards getting into medicine. So the experiences you mentioned should be honest and they should be genuine. I get it, I totally get it. It is very easy to sort of exaggerate and extrapolate the information that you've put in but it is quite important to be sort of brutally honest because just keep in mind they can grill you on this in the interview and if you're being grilled on something that you've not done majority of the time they will be able to tell so be be honest and be sincere so another important point before we get into this i'd say probably the most important point is reflection um you're gonna get sick of me saying reflection but i'd say arguably the most important point of the the personal statement as a whole is what you've taken from your experience. You could have a week in every single ward in the hospital ever. Um, you could have GP placement, you could have surgical placement, you could have everything, but if you're not reflecting on this and you're not taking back the, the sort of core values of the NHS, uh, of, of a doctor, if you're not getting these core values and then reflecting them onto yourself, your personal statement's not gonna be as good as somebody who's done this but got significantly less experience, if that makes sense. Keeping this in mind, I'd say the best thing about the personal statement and the best sort of way to get started is have an end goal and have something to focus on as the target for yourself because it is quite daunting having a big document to do and a deadline. And having to summarise your entire desire to study medicine, it is quite difficult to put into a single document, if you know what I mean. So I've made a free checklist thing that you guys can view and you can print off and whatever. I'll put it in the link in the description and then I'll email it to you. It's just a an A4 page and it's filled with the things that you shouldn't really do until you've finished your personal statement. It's like two columns worth, it's pretty, I'd say it's pretty decent information. You can also find my fully analysed and raw personal statement, the exact thing that I submitted, I'll put it in the description as well in a separate link and you can have a look at that if it would be of interest to you. I'll prefix my experiences by saying I am a graduate, so essentially I've got four years more of it, more experience than if you're, say, applying from school. I don't mean this to come across as anything to do with me bragging about the experience you've had because ultimately it's meaningless. Um, we're all going to get into medical school at the same point. So don't take this as me bragging about my work experience because it's so meaningless, it doesn't matter at all. It's just what I put down on my statement. If you are in high school and say, for example, you're not happy with the amount of experience you've got so far, you've still got time to do things. You can do another month of a placement somewhere. You can get a week's placement somewhere if you work hard enough. Um, there is things you can do for this. To get into it now, my first placement that I did, and I'd say the most important one that I did, was one week's placement in hospital. So I did this when I was, I think, 17. So it was back in 2017. It was years ago when I was first applying to medicine before my undergraduate degree. Um, I did sort of half the week in intensive care, and I did the other half in sort of general surgery, watching breast cancer surgeries. Everyone was so nice to me, it was amazing. It was like the, the crux of the experience that made me go, okay, I can see myself doing this. When it comes to a most important experience, I know for a fact you will have one that is your sort of, your crux experience that you will be mentioning most in your personal statement, if that makes sense. And for me, that was mine. The second thing I did was I worked in a charity care home. So it was an outpatient home. So it was essentially with sort of people that were too independent to be in a hospital ward but they still relied on some sort of level of personal care so they were in a sort of um, a collective residency if that makes sense there was some personal care involved there was hands-on care involved so in terms of medicine it did give me an initial touch of what it was like to actually give somebody hands-on care personal care things like that also more than anything else this experience showed me what it was like to have sort of struggles in a system because as it was a charity care home it was quite stretched in terms of say rota staff wise in terms of resources it was quite stretched so i'd say this did give me an insight into what a maybe uh, a system that is not absolutely thriving could look like so the third thing i did i mentioned this in my previous video i think i got a part-time job so throughout my degree i worked on saturdays i did it for about a year and a half maybe and it was in a community pharmacy so this gave me a general sort of day-to-day -day, almost like a gp feel of things i did sort of get the, the vibes it was almost like a gp a lot of the time and um, maybe because they literally came across the road from a gp that was probably the reason why 
this gave me a sort of community feel. It gave me the one patient would come in, they would ask for something and then I would give them it. If there was any problems, it would give me problem solving skills. For example, say a prescription went missing and it was quite good on the sort of problem solving side of things, general communication. There was a lot of teamwork, multidisciplinary team. You best believe I threw that in my personal statement as many times as I could get it in. Um, that sort of vibe from that, and I did mention that in my personal statement directly, all the skills that came alongside. And the fourth thing, which was actually a bit of a last minute thing, but it was it was probably been my favourite job. Um, as I said, the, the hospital was a placement, it was voluntary, and it was only a week. But in terms of the jobs I've had, healthcare related jobs, this has definitely been my favourite. It was so, it's so fun, I still do it to this day, um, and I do it in Glasgow as well. So when I moved through to Glasgow for uni, I've still got plenty of opportunity to do this as well. Um, I was a vaccinator for the COVID-19 JAGS. So just as a general, again, one-to-one -one patient basis, I was, um, and if you're sort of aware of the different ranks in the NHS, I was only a band three. Um, so as far as things go, I wasn't qualified to do anything apart from do the direct sort of admission of the vaccine. Um, I would have another doctor, another sort of qualified nurse, a dentist, etc. Somebody with a professional body behind them. Um, they would be working with me and some other band three vaccinators. So it was good to sort of speak to doctors there directly, as well as get a feel of, again, working in the community um, with something that was a current issue at the time. And I did feel like I was helpful to some degree and everyone was so grateful. So that was probably, I'd say that's probably one of the favorite jobs that I did. And I, I touched on it previously, but it did allow me to speak to doctors, um, particularly about the NHS. And I mentioned that I was applying and to be honest, most of them said, don't apply. Most of them said, don't bother, save yourself at this point. Um, but I'm here now, so I obviously didn't listen to that advice, and I think I think medicine is for me at this point. So in my head at this point, when they're telling me not to go into it, I'm like, mm. so in my personal statement, these were my main experiences, and these were the things that essentially got me into medical school and the, my number one choice. Of course, I mentioned things towards the end that were more specific about me, so more personal things, jobs aside. Um, I mentioned things about sort of like exercising, going to the gym, reflecting on things. Things like this I did in my general day-to-day -day life that weren't big enough to take up a huge paragraph but are still quite important to me. I think it is important to show a personal touch in your personal statement as well. Another thing is I made sure that everything I was mentioning in my personal statement, I was comfortable enough to get grilled on it in an interview essentially. So I was quite comfortable at, at interview stage anyway. I wouldn't expect yourself to be it at this stage. But make sure by the interview stage time, you're comfortable enough to get grilled and ask questions and ask questions about the questions about whatever experiences you've mentioned because essentially if you're putting on that personal statement you're putting it there for yourself to be questioned on it so yeah i'd say that's what i've done if you are worried about the personal statement and anything i've put some links in the description i've made a wee lecture video about it um i it might not be in the link in the description straight away but if you come back in maybe a few days to a week um, and especially in next week's video i'll put it in the description it's a lecture video about how i did it and what you can do sort of with my help if that makes sense so with that thank you very much for watching i'll see you in next week's video and yeah thanks for watching